So we're 1949, 1950, 1951. Where are we now? We're 1947. Took us down to the Woodstock Playhouse, and they did weekly rep, and you spent a week on lights, a week on advertising, a week on props and costumes, and a week on on acting. You would be in the play, and that went on from. So June. you're you're a student at U of T. Yes. And you're here at Hart House with Bob Gill, and he takes you to Woodstock, Ontario. Woodstock Playhouse in New York. Woodstock Playhouse in New York. He was asked to direct down there, and he said yes, and I will bring down apprentices, as we were called. And we were down there. I think we got about twenty bucks a week or something. And so, do you remember uh, what kind of shows you did? As well, this I mean, Woodstock we had Alyssa running? Landy and Everett, Everett Horton, and we did comedies and the Barretts of Wimpole Street, and you know, things of that nature. And you acted? And we you acted did. one of those, and then you, as I say, you worked on lighting or costumes or whatever. So it was a, a thorough grounding in, in the theater and how it, how it works. So then we go back to the college. You have to write exams and pass them. But aside from that, next year, Murray and Donald started the Straw Hat Players. Murray and Donald Davis. M Murray and Donald Davis, and they were up in Muskoka, because that's where their uh, summer home was. And um, we were billeted. And every Sunday, we would go to the Davis's house, the cottage, and have a day. But you had to learn, I mean, absolutely learned your lines then, because you were also set or or, or PR or something. So Sunday was always very busy, but you ha he always had a lovely roast beef, two vegetables, lovely desserts, terrific. I mean, we were so, and we played everything. You played old people, young people, lame people. <laughs> it was terrific. A really great time. So when and you say you played old people and young people, you were into the number five and number seven oh, and number exactly. nine. exactly. Grease paint. Yes. And, and a shoe polish in the hair for gray. Shoe polish? Yeah. In the hair? For, the, mm -hmm. for the hair. And, and um, facial hair, though, as a woman, you wouldn't use facial hair, but. <laughs> no. Were they oh, into, yes, they had, oh, yes, mustaches. And, and each sorry, actor yeah. had their own supply of yes. facial hair that they had. And say, we did, uh, we, uh, everybody was in, uh, did everything in the library. That was where we changed clothes in Port Carling. It played Gravenhurst, Port Carling, and then the. It played uh, Jackson's Point and somewhere near ha Halliburton the first year, and then we just got it down. I was with them for eight years, so it was Jackson, so it was uh, Port Carling and Gravenhurst, and you played a week in Gravenhurst, and then you got in the bus and played a week in Port Carling. You got in the company bus or the Greyhound bus? A company bus. We had a bus that actually, because uh, we had to get the scenery up and back too. So that was quite tricky on the weekends, getting And that. what were the audiences like? The audiences were absolutely marvelous. There you are as a young woman, starting, wanting to go into the arts. You're in Toronto. So many of the artists felt they had to go to New York. They had to go to London. They had to go to Paris. Were you, f were you caught in those kind of no, decisions? No, no. We graduated and um, did a eight month tour of Canada with the drunkard, then went back to the Straw Hat Players. The next year we did a review called There Goes Ye Yesterday. Both of those were with John Pratt and Mary Matheson. Right. Uh, touring Canada. And then, um, from then on, I produced a, a show of my own uh, called um, As I See It one year, and the next year I did um, Spare Rib, which was a history of Canada, all the people who, with the accent on women, because... Spare Rib. Spare Rib, yeah. And I always, not madly popular, but, you know, Canada was founded by women. The men came in to get the furs, to make the hats to sell and make a million bucks or whatever they did. The Indian women fed them, clothed them, showed them the way, set up the camps, did all. The, the women did it. You know, the men followed because they were making the money. 
women got, you know, nada. But yeah. that just, you but all, always knew you wanted to carve out a career and an art in this Well, country. you see, at that point, uh, you've done two Canada tours, you've done it, and that's, that's what you did. Now, there was no Canada Council at that time. So, uh, to get the scratch, you had to um, get people that would invest in it. And then in selling it around the province, mm -hmm. I would go to a town that I fitted in with the tour and either go to the library or the newspaper office and say, who are your citizens here that do things or women's groups or whatever? And I would sell them the package. If they sold the tickets and filled the theater, they could make $1,000 for their charity. Or so whatever. you were advanced. You went. I out went out first to you know, to sell. A week before, a month before. Oh no, no, a year, a year, almost a year before. It oh. took it took a long time. Now it, when we went to England, it took five minutes. But in Canada, there was nothing. So you would go out a year before one of these cross country tours. Or or cross, no, just Ontario. Or I just didn't, Ontario. Yeah, I just I just did Ontario. And you mm. would set up groups to sponsor or present? Prese uh, sponsor me, yeah. And then I had uh, the stuff for the posters. They just had to put in their dates and whatever. And what kind of groups would sponsor you? Um, the women's groups. Um, uh, their literary group or their hospital group or, you know. Mm -hmm. But you'd get, find out from in each town who was the sort of the dynamo around. And you'd go and say you're head of the hospital group, and you must need money. Oh yes, we're all. I mean, everybody always needs money. On an Ontario tour, how many uh, places would you go to? It would last about um, about a month, to six weeks. Sometimes I would. I wouldn't ever play on those small towns. I never played a full week there. I'd do Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then go and set up or go back to Toronto and then, you know, set up for the next one. And what kind so of venues you, would you be in? Church basements, churches, um, auditoriums, school auditoriums, you know, that kind of thing. There is a circuit of old opera houses and mm -hmm. sort of presentation yeah. houses from mm -hmm. the 19th century. Yeah, Ontario. which is like Gravenhurst. The like Gravenhurst, Gravenhurst like yeah. Brantford, like yeah. Coburg, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Kingston. They're yeah. all, they were all set there. Yeah. Did you ever go into any of those houses? No, I, I didn't because they were had been uh, unused at that point and, and not from, it was the type of stuff that I did where the women, a place that they would all go right. and there was, you know, some parking and they would know it and right. I'd go in and look and, you know, sometimes you had to carry lights, sometimes you didn't, you know, depended.